I'm Jesse Eging, previously Jesse Rolls, and I'm one of six siblings to endure abuse, neglect, torture, and starvation by the hands of my aggressor over the course of seven years. My aggressor just so happens to be my birth mother, Mary Rolls, and her dominant partner, Alice Jenkins. My mother, Mary, is a morphine addict. She uses her drug abuse and the vegetative state it left her in as an excuse to allow the abuse to happen. She claims that Alice was in complete control of her and her children. I was eight years old and only weighed 28 pounds. This is my childhood. One fateful night in April of 2003, four of my brothers and I escaped from a three by five closet with the help of our sister. Two of my brothers and I then made the decision to escape the home out of the second story bedroom window. My oldest brother loaded me onto his back and we climbed down the second story balcony using the drain pipe. The drain pipe had broke and we thought the noise would wake Alice and Mary and that they would come outside, find one of our brothers on the roof and find us in the grass and put us back in the house. My third oldest brother had to jump off the second story balcony and break, broke his ankle. We ran around the corner to a house and drank water from a hose. We then started walking the streets barefoot and shirtless. We walked for what seemed like hours. When you're locked in a confined space, you lose your sense of time for what seems like forever. I remember the exact moment we were found. We were walking through a lot of trees. We passed the high school. We passed a house with a light on in the front window. We were talking, making a bit of noise, and the curtain in the window opened and I saw a lady watching us. She quickly dialed the phone and within minutes a cruiser passed us. The cruiser came back minutes later and stopped. The officer put us in the back of their car and asked a lot of questions. We ended up telling them everything. The officers fed us Subway and Gatorade. After what seemed like many more hours, they returned us to the house. We were terrified that they thought we were lying. This was the first and only chance we had. We hid under the back seat, kicking and screaming. The next thing we saw, see, and hear are lights and sirens. Please show up to our doors, forcefully enter our home, and arrest Alice and Mary. They escort out my second oldest brother, younger brother, and oldest sister. We never saw Alice and Mary again. We were confined to a 3 by 5 closet for days, weeks, and even months at a time. We were not allowed to use the restroom. We pulled up the carpet in the bedroom and in the closet to hide our feces and urine. We were forced to kneel in front of the toilet and clean it with our mouths. We were forced to kneel in front of Alice and we were forced to eat animal feces. We were forced to hold each other down while Alice physically abused us with a belt or a hammer while kicking us with her steel-toed boots. We were fed half a peanut butter sandwich uh, sporadically. We resorted to regurgitation to keep ourselves fed. We were restrained to beds with the doors restrained from opening. We were restrained to a car seat and left in the basement of Alice and Mary's parents' homes for hours. Today, Mary maintains her story that she was as much a victim as her children. She is apologetic and remorseful for what she has done and has accepted the consequences of her actions. Alice maintains her innocence and her family states that she is a nonviolent criminal. To this day, I think about the environment I was raised in and the childhood that was taken away from me. I think about death and how close I'd come. I live in, I live in Scottsdale, Arizona. I'm in a mature relationship. I'm a full-time student studying to be a personal trainer. I'm a professional parkour and free-running athlete and coach of four years. I have a beautiful adopted family who love and care for each other very much. I am diagnosed with PTSD and trigotillomania, but have found ways to cope. All I'm asking for is justice.